name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, what happiness floods the souls of parents when their children are baptized and learn in the home at an early age their basic prayers, including the rosary. Soon they learn how to assist at the holy sacrifice of the Mass and make their first confession and first Holy Communion, later followed by confirmation. In many cases, Catholic children at this time in their lives are fervent, devout, and enthusiastic about their faith. However, although good Catholic parents are elated at such a strong spiritual foundation and promising beginning, temptations, trials, and storms are on the horizon. How many good parents whose children even attended a traditional Catholic school have seen them become tepid, apathetic, worldly, anti-religious, or misled by bad companions. In our age, children, teens, and young adults must pass through incredible obstacles and spiritual dangers. Sadly, they're surrounded by many corrupt people. In an attempt to just try to fit in, Catholics can succumb to peer pressure and human respect. Multitudes spend their whole life in habitual mortal sin, wasting their times in trivial and sinful pursuits. Will your children persevere in the faith and save their immortal soul? Shall even you persevere in the faith and go to heaven? My dearly beloved in Christ, life is a series of spiritual battles against the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world is infested with demons, even though we can't see them. They're everywhere, along with their traps. Frequent reception of the sacraments, fasting, and prayer, especially the rosary, keep evil spirits somewhat at bay. Nevertheless, we will still have to fight the spiritual combat until death. One demon told a lady in Chicago, we will battle for your soul your whole life. It's especially hard for our youth to follow God's commandments because they're surrounded by so many others who totally ignore them, determining for themselves what is right and wrong. In today's society, it's very difficult to avoid occasions of sin because they're so prevalent. Sins of the body, including pornography, filthy, sick movies, and immorality on the internet, snatch many souls. Although electronics can be beneficial and useful, they can easily become addictive, waste precious time, and lead souls into mortal sin. Numerous evil television programs, movies, websites, etc., have been responsible for the loss of countless souls. For too many people, the screen of their TV, phone, tablet, and computer have become Satan's tabernacles where their faith and morals are not only imperiled, but too often destroyed. The styles, commercials, and entertainment of society also promote a culture of vanity. Vanity is dangerous because there's so much focus on self, especially the body, and not the things of the spirit or God. Vanity focuses on materialism and competition. Women sometimes dress indecently for other women, not men because they're in competition. It's very difficult to enlighten and change the habitual sinner because he's enslaved by the devil, enjoys his lifestyle, and does not want to change it. When the devil has a grip, he does not let go. Those who have left the Catholicism to join other churches or denominations need to come back or they'll be lost forever. Tragically, so many souls, even the youth, are falling, fast falling into hell like rain pouring from the sky. Faced with so many strong, cunning spiritual enemies and finding it so difficult to consistently do the right thing, some Catholics, especially our youth, become discouraged and are strongly tempted to just give up. Nevertheless, we must do whatever we can whatever we can, 
to prevent ourselves and our loved ones from going to hell. We're on the winning side with God, and he will provide us with the graces necessary for salvation. But we must pray and correspond with these graces. My dearly beloved in Christ, what can we do for ourselves and our loved ones so that we can win the spiritual war? During wartime, brilliant military commanders and generals sometimes make colossal mistakes and miscalculations in strategy and tactics. This is because no person can ever anticipate all possibilities that can be imagined by another human mind. The best that a military leader can do is to be alert and vigilant so that a surprise attack by an enemy would be unlikely to achieve decisive and disastrous results. A general must ensure that his troops are armed, protected, and defended. Applying this to the spiritual life, parents as spiritual leaders of their families can take steps to safeguard their own souls and the immortal souls of their loved ones. Due to our fallen nature, we can never be entirely secure. However, by the grace of God, we can fortify our souls and assist our loved ones to persevere despite the relentless attacks of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amid the countless spiritual dangers of these evil times, we can persevere in our faith by means of vigilance, self-denial, and especially by prayer and the sacraments. Our battle cry must be faith, courage, and perseverance. It appears as if the Catholic Church is facing its last battle against Satan and Antichrist. Satan wants us to feel weak, hopeless, discouraged and fearful. The devil urges us to stop praying and to give up. This is not the time to retreat or become depressed. We must be strong and fight with profound humility. We must have immense confidence in the power of God and our Blessed Mother. Let us fear no evil because the Lord is with us. St. Michael told the prophet Daniel, Fear not, peace be to thee. Take courage and be strong. My dearly beloved in Christ, the grace of a good death or final perseverance is one of the most necessary of all graces. Our eternal well-being or sorrow depends upon it. Our Lord said, whoever perseveres to the end, he shall be saved. Prayer can obtain for us the grace of final perseverance. This doctrine is taught unanimously by saints and masters of the spiritual life. St. Augustine said, The grace of perseverance can be obtained by humble prayer. Suarez affirms, If anyone resolutely continues to pray for the grace of perseverance, he will infallibly obtain it. St. Thomas Aquinas writes, Holiness of life is the fruit of prayer, but a holy death is by far more a fruit of prayer. A person who does not pray for this grace will not obtain it. We know, says St. Augustine, that God grants the grace of final perseverance only to those who ask him for it. According to St. Robert Ballerman, it's not sufficient to pray for the grace of final perseverance once or a few times only. We must continue to pray for it every day, even to the end of our lives. St. Gregory the Great remarks, God desires to give us the grace of final perseverance, but at the same time he wishes us to ask for it often. Without this grace, all other graces would be unavailing. Perseverance is more difficult today than ever before because we're attacked by so many powerful spiritual enemies. We're constantly in danger of losing our immortal souls. Nevertheless, God has given us many aids to help us persevere through these evil times. First is a frequent receptions, reception of the sacraments and penance in the Holy Eucharist. Confession not only has a beneficial effect of restoring or increasing sanctifying grace and forgiving our sins, but also helps us to avoid sinning in the future. In addition, it provides us with an opportunity to receive spiritual advice and instruction from the priest. According to the Baltimore Catechism, the chief effects of a worthy communion are a closer union with our Lord and a more fervent love of God and of our neighbor. 
an increase of sanctifying grace, preservation from mortal sin and the remission of venial sin, and the lessening of our inclinations to sin with help to practice good works. My dear and beloved in Christ, the Catechism and the Council of Trent teaches that the grace of the Holy Eucharist invigorates and delights the soul, strengthens us against temptation, and facilitates the attainment of eternal life. It restrains and represses the lust of the flesh. For, for while it inflames the soul more ardently with the fire of charity, it of necessity extinguishes the ardor of our sinful passions or concupiscence. By the grace of this sacrament, people enjoy the greatest peace and tranquility of conscience during the present life. When the hour of departing from this world shall have arrived, invigorated by the strengthening influence of this heavenly food, they will ascend to unfading glory and bliss. Secondly, the holy sacrifice of the Mass and adoration of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament are great aids for perseverance. If we ad devoutly assist at the holy sacrifice of the Mass, we will obtain oceans of grace. If we frequently visit our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, we will grow much deeper in our union with God. A devout religious once revealed to St. Teresa of Avila, we in heaven and you on earth must resemble each other in love and gratitude toward God. For you possess under the sacramental veil him whom we behold face to face in heaven. By spending a quarter of an hour in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, you will perhaps gain more graces than in all the other spiritual exercises of the day. Third, devotion of the Sacred Heart of Jesus will also help us to persevere. According to Father Matteo, do not be afraid. The heart of Jesus loves you. Say, I can be a saint. I must be a saint. I will be a saint. Come what may. Our Lord gave to St. Margaret Mary 12 promises to those who would offer his Sacred Heart their love, gratitude, reparation, and veneration. Here are some of these sublime promises. I will give them all the graces necessary in their state of life. I will establish peace in their families. I will bless every house in which an image of my sacred heart is exposed and honored. Sinners shall find in my heart a fountain and infinite ocean of mercy. I will console them in all their difficulties. I will be their refuge during life and especially at the hour of death. I will reign through my heart despite Satan and his agents. Christ's promises are real. Those who venerate the sacred heart of Jesus can be assured that he will assist them at the hour of death. St. Margaret Mary has written, How sweet it is to die after having continually nourished devotion to the heart of him who is to be our judge. Our Lord promised that those who make the nine first Fridays will receive the grace of final penitence. They shall not die in my displeasure, nor without their sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in that last moment. My dearly beloved in Christ, the sacred heart of Jesus suffers because people sin all the time. Not many people practice this devotion anymore. Christ died for ungrateful humanity of which most souls are likely going to hell. Most people don't even seem to care. Hell awaits very many of them. They live only for the pleasures of this world. Fourth, devotion of the Blessed Virgin Mary is of utmost importance in persevering in the faith. St. Francis saw in ecstasy a great ladder ascending into heaven at the top of which stood the Blessed Virgin and by which it was shown him he must descend to reach heaven. St. Alphonsus Maria de Ligori stated, a devout servant of Mary will never perish. That means... They will not go to hell. She will fight for their souls, especially at the end of their life. St. Louis Marie de Montfort teaches that even to the end of time, Our Lady will guard her faithful servants from Satan's cruel claw. This was evident during the time of the Protestant Revolution, when certain parts of Europe rejected the new religion and remained Catholic because of the intensity of their devotion to Mary. The spread of Protestantism was abruptly halted in the areas of Germany 
where the rosary was faithfully recited. St. Germanus has written, it's Mary who, when her holy name is invoked, will drive far from us the assaults of the devils and protect us from their formidable assaults. Our Lady guides her children safely through the hidden snares set for them by the evil spirits and leads them to their heavenly home. The Blessed Virgin Mary will help to make us courageous in the crosses of every day so we may stand unafraid before a jeering world and do what we know to be right, whatever the mob may think. In his guide to the spiritual life, Scaramelli stated, amid all the obstacles that the devil put in the way of our spiritual progress, there is no means more effectual than devotion to Mary and a continual recourse to her and all the assaults which we sustain from their temptations. Devotion to Mary especially helps people at the end of their lives and obtains for them the grace of final perseverance. My dearly beloved in Christ, Mary is always by our Lord's side, helping him, always praying for everyone, asking for mercy for everyone. The Blessed Virgin Mary protects her children and leads them to her son. Our Lady is so loving and kind. She's quick to hear the prayers of parents when they pray for their children. The Blessed Virgin Mary forces evil spirits back to the pit of hell. Every one of the demons has an evil job to destroy people, to kill, torment, and torture, to cause strife, to lead into sin, etc. Our Lady intervenes so they can't finish their evil work. She ruins everything for them. Our Heavenly Queen messes up everything for Satan and his demons. Sometimes Our Lady will even beg her Divine Son for a particular person's soul in order to give him a second chance. She asks our Lord and sometimes he says, okay, let's give him a second chance and see if he changes his life. St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori and other authors relate stories where the Blessed Virgin Mary delivered sinners from death and the danger of hell in order to give them time to amend their wicked life and repent. They should have died and were on their way to hell, but she said, you know what? Let's give them a second chance. Let's see if after this they turn their lives around. Because of her, our Lord has mercy on many people in this wretched world, which should have been destroyed a long time ago. A noble youth named Eskel was sent by the prince, his father, to a city in Saxony to study, but he gave himself to a disorderly life. He afterwards became dangerously ill and received extreme unction. While in this state, he had a vision. He found himself shut up in a fiery furnace and believed himself already in hell, but then seemed to escape from it by a hole and took refuge in a great palace in an apartment of which he saw the Most Holy Virgin, who said to him, Presumptuous man that thou art, do you dare to appear before me? Depart hence and go to that fire which you have deserved. The young man then besought the Blessed Virgin to have mercy on him and then addressed himself to some persons who were there present and entreated them to recommend him to Mary. They did so and the Divine Mother replied, But you do not know the wicked life which he leads and that he does not even deign to salute me with the Hail Mary. His advocates replied, but lady, he will change his life. And the young man added, yes, I promise in good earnest to amend, and I will be thy devout client. The Blessed Virgin anger, Virgin's anger was then appeased, and she said to him, well, I accept your promise. Be faithful to me, and meanwhile, with my blessing, be delivered from death and hell. With these words, the vision disappeared. Esco returned himself and blessing Mary, related to others the grace which he had received. And from that time, he led a holy life, always preserving great devotion to our Blessed Lady. He became Archbishop of London in Sweden, where he converted many to the faith. Towards the end of his life, on account of his age, he renounced his archbishopric and became a monk in Clairvaux where he lived for four years and died a holy death. 
Hence, he is numbered by some authors among the Cistercian saints. Fifth, the rosary is Our Lady's favorite prayer. Everyone should be praying the rosary, not just once a day, but as often as they can, even two, three, four times. Many Catholics don't pray it enough. The rosary should be prayed by families, by young and old, by clergy and religious, because Satan is stealing souls every day. Our Lady protects those who pray the rosary and sends graces down to help them. The rosary protects them from sin. Housewives at home whose children are at school can pray more if they want, but they don't. They sit in front of the TV and watch soap operas or instead do other things with their friends. They do unnecessary shopping or go with their friends to lunch or to the movies when they should be praying more for their children. The mothers who pray the rosary give their children more of a chance. Sadly, even though the rosary is so powerful, many Catholics don't pray these beads. They feel they don't have time and can't be bothered. If we say many rosaries all through our life, the Blessed Virgin Mary will be there at the end of our life, and she will help so that we do not lose our soul. Every rosary goes to judgment. We receive few graces or many, depending on the number of the rosaries and how well we've said them in our lifetime. Keep praying the rosary. By praying the rosary, youth are saved from the clutches of the devil. When we pray the rosary, Our Lady protects us from Satan, from misfortune, from car accidents, from calamities and tragedies. Sometimes demons cause accidents because there are many people on the road who never pray. There are a lot of car accidents that can be avoided by these beads. Evil spirits hate prayers in honor of Our Lady, especially the Rosary and the Hail Mary. Demons try to prevent us from praying the Rosary because it saves souls, snatches souls from hell, and convert sinners. If we don't pray the rosary, it's easier to sin. And we don't have as much protection from the Blessed Virgin Mary. When we pray the rosary, it brings about a positive change in our life. My dearly beloved in Christ, because the rosary takes many souls away from the devil and prevents people from going to hell, the evil spirits scream when they see the rosary, even before people begin to pray. The rosary tortures and punishes demons every time it prays. It paralyzes most evil spirits from doing harm to people. In human terms, it causes them much pain, similar to being punched in the gut, burned, stabbed with daggers, etc. They hate those beads. The rosary attacks Satan and the demons and weakens them. The rosary should be taught to even little children. When Our Lady of Fatima told Lucia that the rosary would have special efficacy in these times, she meant grace, power, and protection. The Blessed Virgin Mary said that many souls are being lost and emphasized children especially. The rosary and the brown scapular are inseparable. Almighty God, through the instrumentality of the Blessed Virgin Mary, makes use of seemingly insignificant sacramentals, such as the rosary and the scapular, to confound the strong things of the world. These powerful sacramentals have greater importance today than ever before. St. Dominic said, One day, through the rosary and the scapular, the world will be saved. Six, unless we're humble, we will not persevere because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Our Lord said, without me, you can do nothing. Humility and charity are the foundation of the spiritual life and Satan hates them. A priest once attempted an exorcism and the demon wouldn't leave. He asked, why? The evil spirit answered, because we're cousins. Cousins? The devil answered, yes, cousins. You are proud and so am I. 
St. John's Bos Bosco's dream about the roaring bull teaches an important lesson. The angel guide of St. John Bosco showed him a vision and said, witness the effects of humility. Those who did not obey orders and humble themselves were slaughtered. Those who did were saved. The angel repeated the words of our Lord. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. St. John Vianney wrote, Pride is the source of all the vices and the cause of all the evils which have occurred and which are still to occur in the course of the centuries. It was the first sin committed by the fallen angels and by our first parents, Adam and Eve. Pride stands as the greatest sin because it's aimed directly at Almighty God. It's essentially a lie and a theft from God. It's the most dangerous sin because it's so common and so subtle and nourishes the very roots of all the other sins. St. Augustine has written, Every other kind of iniquity prompts the doing of evil deeds, but pride lurks even in good deeds to their undoing. My dearly beloved in Christ, don't let pride into your life. The world is full of pride. Wars are caused by pride. Marriages and friendships are torn apart. Children not speaking to their parents. Families do not speak for years. Pride is a deadly sin and needs to be cut out of your life. If you don't cut it out of your life, it grows like a deadly cancer. Substitute your prideful attitude with one that's humble and loving. Seventh, devotion to St. Joseph is fittingly associated with our preparation for a happy death, the crown of a virtuous life, because he died peacefully in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Many are not prepared to die and die unexpectedly in car accidents, tornadoes, earthquakes, etc. Suddenly, they're gone. To avoid an unprovided death, it's actually better to be sick so you can see a true priest before you die. It's not good to go suddenly unless you're prepared, although many die that way. How fortunate are those who get to see a traditional Catholic priest on their deathbeds. Sadly, many die without being prepared. No holy viaticum, no last confession, nothing. It's a general rule that as you live, so shall you die. If you're devoted to St. Joseph and pray for a happy death, he will intercede for you so that you're not unprepared and can receive the last sacraments. He can also help you to avoid purgatory. My mother had a great devotion to St. Joseph and had many masses offered in his honor for a happy death. She died very peacefully and was well prepared for judgment. St. Joseph is powerful against evil spirits and is called the terror of demons. In the prayer to St. Joseph recited after the rosary during the month of October, we pray, Aid us from on high, most valiant defender, in this conflict with the powers of darkness. Although head of the Holy Family, he was a quiet man who didn't say much, but prayed a lot. All men should imitate his holiness. Our Lord and Our Lady love him very much because he took such good care of them. Since St. Joseph has such a high place in heaven because of his goodness and meekness, we should have great confidence in his intercessory power. Eighth, in the providence of God, devotion to St. Philomena was reserved for these times. St. Philomena was a virgin martyr who died instead of giving up her virginity. She was a good, good girl who refused a throne, converted people, died a horrible death, and is feared by all the demons in hell. We should pray to her often and strive to imitate her courage and purity. The St. Philomena cord is a powerful aid to preserve chastity. Remember, to St. Philomena, nothing is refused. Catholics should make use of sacramentals such as holy water and the St. Benedict medal because they have power over demons and evil spirits and provide protection for them, from them. St. Teresa of Avila recommended the frequent use of holy water. She said there's nothing 
from which the devils fly more quickly than from holy water. Certainly the power of holy water must be great. For my part, my soul feels particular comfort in taking it. And very generous, generally, a refreshment and interior delight that I cannot express. The frequent use of holy water in all the Catholic churches throughout the world and among the faithful, and this since the beginning of Christianity, is one of the greatest proofs of its importance and usefulness and of its spiritual and temporal benefits. I remember Priest Father Clement Kubish, though, told me this one lady came to church often and then took a, an unusually large amount of holy water from the church and very frequently. And they finally asked her, okay, why do you use so much holy water? And then she said, it makes the best coffee. <laughs> Here are some of its, the marvelous effects of holy water. Remission of venial sin. Remission of temporal punishment due to sin. Expulsion of demons. Healing of the sick, protection from calamities and accidents, averting of dangers which menace our spiritual and temporal life. Therefore, Pope Pius IX said we should use it more frequently and more fervently. The evil spirits hate holy water because it weakens, hurts, and burns them. Easter water and epiphany water are even more powerful than the commonly blessed holy water. My twin brother, Father Francisco, told me about an unforgettable event that illustrates the incredible power of holy water. This occurred while he was visiting a family in Michigan. A teenager walked into the kitchen, grabbed a butcher knife, and was about to stab his mother when Father instinctively sprayed him with holy water. The possessed man instantly froze in place, still holding the knife over her. Father Francisco calmly walked up to him, took the knife out of his hand, and told him in Latin never to hurt anyone. Incredibly, the son instantly returned to his normal state. Tenth, St. Michael and our guardian angels are always ready to come to our aid. Satan works constantly to destroy belief in God, marriages, families, parishes, and your children. Since the bad angels are working so strenuously for our destruction, we should frequently ask St. Michael and our guardian angel for assistance and protection. St. Bernard said, With such powerful guardians, what have we to fear? They cannot be overcome or led astray. They're faithful. They're prudent. They are mighty. Of what shall we be afraid? Only let us follow them, cleave to them, and we shall abide under the protection of the God of heaven. When you feel a heavy trial pressing upon you, or the violence of tribulation impending above you, call upon them, your helpers in time of trouble and tribulation. My dearly beloved in Christ, what should our youth do in order to persevere during these evil times? Pray, go to confession often, adore our Lord in the blessed sacrament when they can. Attend the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass regularly. Avoid hanging around others who will take them off the right track. Hang around good Catholic youth. Read holy books. Don't go to filthy, sick parties. Don't see filthy, sick movies. Stop committing sins against purity. Avoid the temptations this world brings to many. Drugs, alcohol, fornication, pornography. Many things. Youth fall into hell because they're using drugs, fornicating, doing evil things for money, for material things, for self-gratification. It's the now generation. It's the now generation. I want it now. Parents, remember, you must be their model in following God's ways. If they do not see you doing what is right... And if you as parents do not pray for your children, good luck. For demons are taking the youth to hell faster than you can say faster. The most important work of your life is to glorify God and save your immortal soul.
the key elements to success are frequent reception of the sacraments, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, humility, love of God, cooperation with God's grace, prayer, especially the daily rosary, self-denial, conquering temptation, avoiding occasions of sin, and hard work. The personal effort of grinding it out day by day. If we desire to become a saint without exertion and sacrifice, we won't make it. We must be focused upon winning an imperishable crown. Total commitment is not just hard work. It's total dedication every day with a vision or goal in mind. Due to the great evils and seductions of our day, we can't afford to be soft, complacent, tepid, self-indulgent, and worldly. We're living in the times preceding Antichrist. Will we persevere through these dark days ahead? If we're proud, lukewarm in the practice of our faith, addicted to habitual sin and rarely praying the rosary, we will not persevere. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. If we remain humble, cooperate with God's grace, have unlimited confidence in God and our Blessed Mother, frequent the Mass and sacraments, and pray the Rosary daily for moral courage and final perseverance, we will remain faithful to the end of our lives. In closing, a priest said in his sermon, I cannot tell you much about the theology of divine election to eternal life because it's one of the greatest of God's mysteries. And what was he talking about? Who is going to be saved and who's going to be lost? And the Council of Trent called it a hidden mystery. But the priest went on, but for our practical purposes, it'll be enough to explain it this way. The divine election is an election by majority vote. There are three who are voting. God, Satan, and you. Now, you know what side God will vote on. And you also know what, that the devil will vote on the opposite side. Therefore, it's your vote that will decide. And so it's up to you whether you'll go to heaven or hell. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.